Coming up this week on The Spiel. Described as Afro soul rock, the unique sound of Ugandan-born Ben Muana. And as, as great as his name sounds, yes. his guitar tones and his voice tone is even better. Even better. Oh. So things heat up when Dina Cabot of Cesar's The Chandelier Room spiels not one, but three. But three. Three yeah. drinks. Yeah. It's going to blow your mind. So he was best friends with Richie Cunningham and Ralph Mouth on Happy Days. Yeah, that's right. The Spiel's Tim Estilos introduces us to Potsy. And finally, the men of Hiplay Ballerinas. So Welcome to another episode of The Spiel. The Spiel. What? Oh, okay. Let's try it again. The Spiel. Spiel. Can, we, can we do a whole another? Yeah. The Thanks. Okay. So we'd like to welcome you into The Spiel. Satisfactory? That felt okay, too rehearsed. Great. I got the thumbs up. So listen, we're super excited because we're just back from a big award show, and we have some incredible announcements to share. Um, I don't know if the award show was as much fun as going shopping with Rob for the award show. That was a great night, Rob. Rob, have you met Riley? Riley, have you met Rob? Yes, that's Rob. So anyway, we knew we had this big event coming up, right? It's the Carolina Music Awards. And Rob comes in and I say, well, what are you going to wear? It's a formal event. He says, I've got some dress pants, black shirt, whatever. And I'm like, oh, no. Oh, no. We have to go shopping because he needs that just right outfit. And man, did we find it. I guess. If, that's huh? what, if, if you say so. I can't believe you finally took it off. Like you've been wearing it around. I wanted it off immediately. Yeah. Then we get to the, uh, we flew out, right? We, we flew out to the Carolinas. We went to Raleigh, North Carolina. And then the evening of the red carpet. Rob says, what are we supposed to do? Angie I yelled said, at me because I didn't know what to do. <laughs> I said, you got to follow me up here. You got to, you know. And then I was like, pose. do I put my camera down? No. Like, she's like, no, bring it with you. And I'm I like, mean, I don't know what to do. We're there in the capacity of, uh, you know, a music production giant. Right. And it was really interesting because we were there following Diamonds and Whiskey. And you see the lovely Jen here. Um, she and the guys performed and did a great job. It was a night to celebrate not only country music, we were really surprised. Yeah, they hip hop. And they yeah. won a bunch of their their categories. They totally did. So many people were celebrated that evening. Well, we we swept it. Okay. When I say we, our job was to follow Diamonds and Whiskey. Right. Jen. Jennifer Lauren, right. okay? She won female vocalist, right? Yep. She won best song. Right. Okay. Was it country band also, or did they not? Country win? band, best looking musicians in her band, like best looking gal herself, best production company in tow. She won all of that. I feel like some of those are made up. Well, they may have been, but see, <laughs> if, unless you were there, you don't know. But anyway, we came home with some, some beautiful um, brass, if you will. Right. We, we won the awards. Now, to our category, Rob didn't even know they had announced it, because here, here's why. <laughs> it was apparently the one category they did not have enough entries. Right. So they decided to put... Mix all the genres. Walk hard, all the genres in one. Walk hard competed against, take a look at this, a rock band. Turns out we really liked the gal, right? Because the girl in the black, and here's the other thing, you know, we, we appreciate all your votes, by the way. 600,000 votes came in for this particular award show. And, I mean, we received a lot of them. Actually, like a lot, right? Right. But just apparently not enough to beat out a, a rock band. We, we only right. received an, a lot in one ca in two categories, not in the category right. that we were hoping for. But their music is phenomenal. 
It is phenomenal. And we look forward to making your music video uh, very soon, the next one, and <laughs> we'll, we'll win together. But we are super excited because apparently what we did is good enough, and we're going to now go on to the Carolina Country Music Awards. Coming up in January, everybody. Like that's going to be a big one. That's exciting. And, and, right. And we won't even worry about the rock group there, right? Because right? it'll right. be a, a country. If country a rock event. group gets into a country Man, thing, that'd be... We're going to have some problems, right? All right, listen, we have a great show, I promise. Shane, you concur? You don't know yet? You'll let me know? Okay. We'll find out. We'll find out. It's off to a good start. It's off. Thank you, Jacob. It is off to a good start. And Riley still has the camera pointed at, at Shane. He's going to catch on before the show's over. We'll be right back. There are no poisonous snakes in the U.S. Yes, that one. He's an actor, director, and these days a successful entrepreneur. We get to catch up with Anson Williams, better known as Potsy from the classic TV show. It's the weekend and your symptoms are worsening. The morning of a big meeting and you have a bigger sore throat. Ever experienced that urgency after picking up your sick child and your community health center has already closed? You will be able to connect to a provider at crhpc.org. Even if you have never been to CRHPC, you are welcome to utilize our services. Feel better after scheduling a video visit with CRHPC. Well, you know what we do on the spiel. So when we see famous people, I mean, all over the media, the, the reporters, everyone's gone crazy for individuals. We, too, have to go in search of those people. And that's how we found you, Gentry. Yes. Yeah. Did you know you were a superstar and all that good stuff? I mean, I can look myself up now. So, <laughs> I mean. Oh, he can Google himself. I love that. So Gentry Heupel of Carterville, Illinois. Um, you know, and, and they said it was such a small town, right? And, and nothing would ever come of it. And look at you now. You just put it on the map of being the place to be in Illinois. Yeah. Um, you thought that this great state of Illinois needed a state snake? Yep. You just woke up one day. I was like, you know what Illinois needs? I mean, not that well, there's I not did have a lot note. of inspiration from my mom. Right. But, yes, I definitely thought that there should be a designation or given some yeah. credit front of them because they're such an important factor in our ecosystems and get such a bad reputation. Okay, you have a sound bite that just blows me away and part of the reason I had to bring you on for clarification. There are no poisonous snakes in the U.S. In the U.S., not one. Now, if, for one exception, unnaturally so, okay. the garter snake, okay. one of the most common, if it eats a poisonous poisonous toad or salamander, it can become, its skin can become partially toxic, but again, unnaturally so. Right. But that was a little <clears throat> play on words there. It's not poisonous, yeah. it's venomous. And I've even heard and seen professionals say poisonous, and I'm sure it just comes from the influence. Everyone says that, but it's actually not true. Venomous. For America. Explain the venomous. Venomous is when it gets injected into your bloodstream, like a bite, there like you go. a snake. Whereas poisonous is if you eat it or like you touch it and like rub your eyes or something like that. You have a room full of this, these documents now where the entire state of Illinois and the officials inside of it, all of our lawmakers, they've now recognized you as, you know, coming up with this idea and designating the eastern milk snake, mm -hmm. okay, to be specific, so they can come in any color. Mostly. These like, colors that we're seeing, the, yes. the brights. The and reds the, and the browns and the oranges. Okay. Um, so you had a big day. <laughs> Truly, there was a, a news conference for this. And for most young people, that would be a little nerve-wracking. Not for you. Not I mean, really. what did you get? What was presented to you? And what was that experience like? Well, I, um, I got this book from Representative Dave Severn. He gave it to me to get signatures from lots of senators and representatives. And then I got this coin yes. from... Uh, uh, Governor Pritzker himself, and he said it was like at some point I would have to pass it down to someone that I admire. Oh, well. well, so that's good. Um, or whoever you know, my kids would. Um, that's but good work. it was, and it was a really, really great experience to see. I got to be like part of a general assembly, like where they did like sort of not a debate, but like a sort of like 
yeah, general assembly. But it Talk was really important. Stuff. Yes, I got to like sit and sit through it, and, and it was really really cool. Did you get to like hit the gavel or anything <laughs> cool? No, like that? no, I didn't. It was not. You are so smart. How how old are you? I think um, I can ask you that. Uh, Thirteen. Thirteen years old. Can you listen? I am blown away. I mean, it, but it, it has a lot to do with your mom, your upbringing, mm -hmm. your your stepdad, and those people are, are showing you the world and the way it should be seen, and you're not afraid to, to step out there and, and be known, and congratulations. Thank you. What's next for you? Well, um, me and my mom are working on a um, national snake, like oh. a full U.S. snake. Okay. So we uh, are going to try and contact the... Um, Senator the, the Duckworth, ups. okay, the higher ups, and uh, try and get that going. Now, do we want the same mm. type of snake, or mm -mm. okay? I think it. I think it should be different because I also think that snakes have such a large part in our history, United yeah. States history. The uh, Benjamin Franklin, he used it in his join or die um, yes. belief, and it was used on the "Don't Tread on Me" flag, the Eastern Diamondback rattlesnake, and it just like it kind of pops up all over our history for our cause of the like originating you. of our country. So I thought they should definitely have like a national. I think snake. you're right. I think they, they should appreciate that, and yeah. we just we have given you the uh, the spiel seal of approval there. So you definitely need that. Well, thank you so much. You're gonna come back when you do the whole yeah. U.S. thing. Probably. All right, keep us in the loop. We appreciate you. I will. Thank right. you. We'll be right back. We're going to start with the old fashioned. Instead of it being your normal old fashioned, it's called Not Your Daddy's Old Fashioned. Hey, that's our favorite. Oh. Thing <laughs> Still to come, their following is huge for hip lay. It's the men's turn. Everything that I've learned here gave me confidence to actually start working on other people's cars. And if you don't feel like you know something, they'll teach you. You never feel like there's something you can't do. Getting, you know, the fundamentals I need to apply when I go into the field. I know I'll probably have a job before I even leave the program. You're going for a degree, it's two years. That is a short span to learn, and classes are fast. Get you in, get you out, and get you the knowledge. We are spieling it in the Prairie Farms kitchen, but we are not serving milk today, folks. Dina Cabot, welcome. Hi, thank you for having me. Yeah, the chandelier room. I mean, already it just sets a tone, kind of like the cotton candy. You know, you just have all these preconceived notions, and we're here today to just, you know, let everybody know what you've been up to. You stay busy. It's been a very, very busy year. Um, I've been working on the chandelier room, slowly remodeling it. and. Okay. It's just a really cool place, hangout. It's old meets new, mm -hmm. um, fancy but laid back, comfy, but feels like you went somewhere and I love that. you're still in Southern Illinois. We have invited you here today to not only brag about your business and what you're doing and your success, but also to share with our viewers, if you're having a little thing at your home and, and you wanna make some cocktails that will impress, you apparently have to start fresh because you said you made everything like the pineapple juice is fresh everything's fresh so so you always want to start off with the top quality ingredients that you can get your hands on when it comes to cocktails okay we're gonna start with the old-fashioned instead of it being your normal old-fashioned it's called not your daddy's old-fashioned hey that's our favorite oh. drink press off the side <laughs> why because we, we smoke ours oh all right so we're gonna start off with your hey. traditional rocks glass Oh yeah, we're looking to get close on this, Riley. Riley's coming in for the kill now, okay. I use raw sugar, because it's mm -hmm. better for you. Just a little bit of sugar. Then you dissolve it with your bourbon. And you need to spend a little bit on the bourbon for it to be good. You yeah, can't buy if you're okay. gonna go out of your way to make an old fashioned, you right. might as well just get the good liquor. Because the bourbon is the star of the show, right? Yes. Okay. Well, there's a couple of stars here. There's a here. couple of stars. A couple shakes of the orange bitters. Oh. Then you want to use high quality cherries such as Luxardo. Yeah, I've heard. Now, are those things like, it's a ridiculous amount of money, isn't it? They are. They're okay. like $22 for a small jar. Oh, wow. So I put a little bit of the juice in there because mm -hmm. everybody loves that. And then you want to use a fresh slice mm. of orange. Then you muddle. <gasps> muddle. Rob, do you know about the art of muddling? I don't. 
Yeah. You meddle a lot, you know, <laughs> but muddling is... I know mud and yeah. I stir it around a little bit because you want to dissolve the sugar. You want to break down the orange essence and get all the yummy flavors in there. I can already tell that I would like your old-fashioned more so than a lot of places you go. They don't bother with the muddle. They just pour it all in there and hope that you do it, you know, mm -hmm. and experience the same. So this is already a plus. So. This is no. No, we're going to fight for this, Prescott. Who's fighting? <laughs> so you put just enough ice in there, not a whole cup, just okay. to have something to dilute down into the Oh, drink. and now you're about to get crazy. What are you going to do, girl? So I'm going to put some cherry pieces of wood chips. Oh. And you can get different flavors of wood chips, but I like the cherry. Should we get back? Is it not going to explode? Or it okay. gets a little crazy, okay. but we'll be all right. Get back. Oh, girl. Oh, where did, look, that, 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 that's a show. I mean, you put on a show in addition to making someone a drink. That is probably one of the coolest things I've seen. Have you guys ever seen anything like this? Mm -hmm. I haven't, not like that device. The smoke just really makes it so much better. A lot of different so drinks. Cool. It just takes on a different essence. So I've, cool. I've done it with black and blue um, from Pheasant Hollow, mm -hmm. and I just really love that oh. extra smokiness on nice. the wine. It makes it more mellow, but Very marries cool. it all together. I'm impressed. And we're going to be impressed throughout the broadcast. So look at, look at that. I, I, I'm speechless, really. I'm very. It's tough to impress me, but that is impressing me all of a sudden. Um, so what we're going to do? You've agreed to stay throughout the show, right? Yes. And you're going to teach us how to make two more drinks. Yes. Okay. So we want you to stay there. Do I get to sample that, or is that yours? Please, okay. yes, sample it. Do I? I mean, do I wait till the smoke no, goes No, you want to get that. You want to get the smoke. Yeah. Okay. So just. Mm. Okay, I'll see you later. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll be right back. I don't, don't think people realize that lives were actually saved by Happy Days. Oh, honey. When I started to sing and I started to um, really communicate with people at like a heart level while singing, so that's when I started really um, getting professionally into it. This tune is called Pump Your Blood. <laughs> one, two, one, two, three. Pump, 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 The right atrium's where the process begins, where the CO2 blood enters the heart. Anson, it is such a pleasure to chat with you. I have grown up watching Happy Days as well as enjoying it throughout my childhood. And so many people around the world have enjoyed this show. So it's had a great impact on them, but I'd like to know what kind of impact has it had on your life? Well, wow. I mean, it's, it was, uh, was still is such a, a big part of my life, but it's not so much the acting. You know, not so much doing the show. It's what came out of the show. I don't, don't think people realize that lives were actually saved by Happy Days. And it also brought light on a lot of issues uh, that uh, we helped considerably. And that was all because of Gary Marshall, our mentor, the creator of the show. He told us early on that he always wanted to be a teacher, uh, but he went into the entertainment business and uh, he, he made the Paramount Studios his college. And he inspired us, he, 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 right off the top he said, don't get in the way of yourselves, forget the ego. If you want to last in this business, you have to wear a lot of hats. So you have the opportunity here to, to, to sit in on writing sessions, watch the most famous directors in the world direct, you can shadow them. Uh, if you want to know music, if you want to know editing, it's all here for you. Take the time productively, use it as a college. It's what you do, it's not who you are. He said, on your famous platform, he said, Take your light and put it on someone else important that should be heard, that can help considerably, you know, in their world. 
use it productively. You know, it's not really for you. It's for others. And this is the way we, we were, uh, you know, inspired for over a decade. That's a great, great story. Thank you for sharing all of that. Because, yeah. you know, we, we know about the shows themselves. We only know as viewers what we see on the screen. But the, the impact, not just getting paid to do something that you love, but that you're learning something along the way and getting this, this mini history of Hollywood here, if you will, that yeah. you just gave. They paid us to go to the greatest film school in the world. Mm -hmm. Actually, the greatest human nature school. I mean, we learned, and, and you know, and who came, I mean, John Lennon spent a day on the set with us. First year of the show, 1974. And it was, I mean, it was kind of a, just a cold day and, and, and you know, cloudy. And it was kind of like, you know, we're doing kitchen scenes or something. There, was, there was, it wasn't a big day. I think Don was there, I was there, Ron was there, Henry was there. I go over to the, to get some coffee and I, and I look up and I see this, this guy with kind of, with glasses, kind of su sunglasses, not totally dark, but kind of dark and this young kid. And I'm looking at this guy and going, oh, nah. I walk back to the set. I go, hey, hey bro, Don, there's this guy that looks just like John Lennon by the coffee machine. And Don goes, oh yeah, John Lennon came here to spend, to hang with us. <laughs> It was John Lennon to hang with us. No one told us. Nobody said it. And he goes, he goes, oh, yes. And they were going on a tour of Paramount. And, 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 and Julian, when he was 10, his son, Julian Lennon. And he goes, but this is his favorite show. So we've kind of snuck in here. We found it. Oh, so we decided we just, you know, hope we don't mind. Go, no, we don't mind. We don't mind. It's good. So there he spends hours with us. And oh, but we're professionals. He, he, the crew comes up with scripts and you know to sign. He does a little original John Lennon doodle. Not us. Oh no, we're professionals. Oh no, <laughs> we have nothing. We have one picture. One. That's it. One picture for that moment of time. He was the great. He was so shy, and he was. He became just one of us. He was like just no airs, nothing. And he even said, "Hey, I, if singing. You, you, I like your singing." I go, "You watched me sing on the sh John Lennon, you know." And uh, he didn't invite me up in concert, so don't worry. Uh, anyway, um, he was just the nicest, humblest, sweet guy. And it was just, it's just, it was just an amazing experience. Another time, what was it? 10 in the morning, uh, they were filming Sextet, Mae West's last movie, yes. right across the street. And, you know, and how they had all these cameos. Cameos was Ringo Starr and Keith Moon. All of a sudden, they're not feeling um, they're not feeling any pain that morning, and all of a sudden we hear, "We love happy days." There's Ringo Starr and Keith Moon walking in. I'm going, "Okay, I just died, I've gone to heaven. It's I can't get better than this." Wow. And so we hung out with Keith Moon and Ringo Starr. Henry Kissinger comes down one day. I mean, it was crazy. Those are amazing memories, and I I think it speaks to the the relaxed and familial uh, atmosphere of the show that would attract all of those people to not only enjoy it on the tube, but also feel comfortable on set. No one got in the way of themselves. No egos. People, they have this fantasy. Oh, what happens on a set? Oh, well, Gary put up a hoop outside the set. Who, you know, just to shoot baskets. And when, it, when we had, right, we, we shot hoops. Like high school, like That's we're on a great. on a playground. We just so. What do you think of this thing? I don't know. I don't know. What do you think of that? I, I mean, not glamorous, you know, but incredibly productive. Now, as I understand it, all of these great experiences and this great show that that created them almost didn't happen because at the very beginning it was an unsold pilot. There were two pilots for Happy Days. Most people don't know this, and the first one uh, was called Love or something like that tv yeah love and the happy it is um and really about getting a television set this very sweet uh soft pilot almost like summer of 42 and and in the pilot there was no fonzie there was no ralphie marion was in it ron was in it i was in it different mr c harold gould and a different joni and we and the, and, and and they aired it on love american style just to play it off but they they thought for sure we're gonna sell so what happened was they didn't buy it. So I go, I go back to playing the concerned boyfriend parts. 
And I'm up, I remember a year later, um, um, I'm up in uh, Marin County shooting a film called Lisa Bright and Dark. It was a big Hallmark special at the time with Kay Lenz. And I get a call, uh, hey, my, from my agent, hey, they want to do another Happy Days pilot because with American Graffiti, American Graffiti came out, big hit, Grease is on Broadway. They want to do it, but this one's going to be more like graffiti. You know, it's going to be more, you know, it's not going to be so soft. You know, it's going to be more on, on that stuff. I go, great. When do we start? Well, they go, well, you, they, you know, you have to audition again. You have to screen test. I go, we created the parts. Yeah, they think you might be too old. You're kidding. So we got it again. And this time, oh, and they and Don Most actually auditioned for Potsy, screen tested for Potsy. They liked him so much, they created Ralph for him. That's yeah. amazing. And the way Fonzie was written, he was kind of written like a goofball, kind of a big guy, kind of funny. And they really wanted Mickey Dolans to play it. Henry came in. He invented that role. That was not written like that. He invented, hey, ooh, this is all that. He invented all of it, everything. He's totally opposite of, of the description. Of it. You know, he's short. He's totally opposite. And he, won't, he got the part, six lines. Well, you know what happened. Thank God. People, mm -hmm. have, they always ask me, are you jealous of the Fonz? Are you jealous? I go, are you kidding me? He bought me a house. <laughs> Keep going. Keep going, man. Hey, keep going. I want two hours. Keep going, man. Well, Anson, I want to truly thank you for this time and the courtesy. And I just want to thank you for all the entertainment over the years. Oh, you bet. And thank you. Thank you for watching. We wouldn't be here without you. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're going to keep on watching because those reruns last forever. Yes, they do. <laughs> uh, they do. Forever. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> God Have bless. a great day, my friend. Thank Thanks. you. Bye-bye. Weber, I apologize. I'm, I'm giving you an A. A plus. I'm in love. I'm in love with you. It's definitely been something that I share with other people that you choose your own expiration dates, whatever you do. My name is Dr. Siddharth Chandra. If you are depressed or if you have any serious mental health issues, it affects everything you do, from everyone you talk to, your interactions, the way you feel, whether you can work or not. You know, the thing about mental health is, is it's basically the software that runs your entire body. Where we're located and the resources we have available to us, we're usually able to get people in within a couple of days, the same day sometimes. We can do whatever we need to do to make sure that your mental health is well taken care of. Don't let the time of steal your memories Just search and find yourself in this melody Hey, my name is Ben Muwana. I'm going to be playing my song, Stupid Love, off of the EP, One Onawe. Lying here with you, babe It's 
worth the winning cold Not on the wire Cause I left them too long Oh baby Love messed with me I lost my whole attire But the shoes on my feet Oh darling Does it so I own Well, I'm here with you, baby It's worth the suit and smoke How'd I do? Very good. You're on. How does it feel? Amazing. All I, these cameras out on? I know. This staring is, at you? This is the most cameras I've had all at the same time. <laughs> and I have like multiple phones that I use for streaming. So this is crazy. So you're from Uganda originally. Yeah. Yes. And you came over at age? 18. 18 with your yeah. whole family. With my whole family. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, the experience was such that your family's since gone back. Yes. So you're the only one remaining, and you've been here for four years? I've been here... Uh, without the family? Without or when, my when, family. That's for, the last time you saw the them? The last time I saw them was years four years ago, yes. Wow. Yeah, it's been a long time. Do they support what you're doing? Yes, they do. I actually wrote a song uh, for my mother because uh, it's just been in such a long time. I hadn't seen her. It's, the song is called Home, um, and it was. I was just telling her that, you know, there's a lot of things I start to forget about home because I've been away for so long mm. um, but this I can't forget and it's just about her and how she used to sing around the house um, and she liked it and she supports it but she always tells me just make sure there's food on the table and um, hopefully this pays for that one day. Is she the inspiration behind your love of music or where did that come from? Both of them uh, they actually met uh, playing um, in a college band together and uh, I really wish that they you know 
put, put us way more into music than than they did. But uh, they did uh, teach us uh, some piano, guitar, things like that. Um, then I met a girl in high school that just said, like, I really like guitar players. And I don't even remember what the conversation was about. <laughs> You're like, but, I'll play guitar. but I figured I was like, well, I'm going to go learn it now. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Mm. So uh, that's really kind of what got me into. But when I started to sing and I started to um, really communicate with people at like a heart level while singing um, in Milwaukee and Kenosha, that's when I started really um, getting professionally into it. And it was just something that I just we always find a connection with someone just like, you know, we did with you. Yes. Um, and that's just what I live for now. It's it's such a unique sound. It's it's rich. It's it's soulful. And how do you describe what it is that I, you do? I don't know yet. It's how long do you have? It's <laughs> <normally>. <laughs> um, it's, uh, it's inspired by um, a lot of the sounds I grew up on. A lot of the songs I grew up on in Uganda, and uh, we actually listen to a lot of old school uh, music, probably because it's the third world. So mm. things kind of got took a second to it get there. Takes a little while. Yeah, but uh, um, a lot of Michael Jackson growing up, Luther Vandross. Uh, you know, a lot of. Uh, Need to Breathe, actually, uh, when we got here, was uh, a lot of my big influence. And so it's a mixture of all those things. Write these songs, and when you perform, there's a lot of, there's love, there's maybe a little hurt, little, you know. Yeah, um, I think that's almost the only way I've learned to do it is is just pour your heart out. And I know one at least one person will feel the same, right? And that's mm -hmm. that's how the music is supposed to go. And um, that's where we, we will find common ground as, as, you know, as I sing, as they listen. And um, so I have to I have to get deep. I have to be honest and I have to be vulnerable. So, oh. yeah. Well, it would be a gift for more people to hear you, for everybody to hear you. Thank you. Appreciate yeah. that. You're amazing. Thank you. And we'll be right back. So the best way to start off with a pineapple spicy margarita is to make your own pineapple jalapeno juice. It gives me the opportunity to give back, to give to the, the next generation or even people older than me. Well, while Angie is enjoying her not your daddy's old fashioned, I'm not your daddy. I'm gonna make a spicy pineapple margarita. Mm. So the best way to start off with a pineapple spicy margarita is to make your own pineapple jalapeno juice. Ooh. So that's what we have right here. I made this juice fresh, and then we're gonna ram it. So what castle did you take this from? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we call this the pimp cup because it's amazingly huge. There it is. We're going to rim it with tajin. Oh. If you're not familiar with tajin, it is a Hispanic seasoning slash garnish. They put it on a lot of uh, fruits. And it's really good oh. on a margarita. Interesting. You're welcome for the ice scooper, by the way. I think you asked us to give you our best plastic. Thank you. Up. I appreciate it. At least we could do. That's embarrassing. That's not. Why don't we have the little tongy things that you can get ice? It's okay. Sorry about that. It's my fault. Alrighty. So another good um, thing you need to start off with is some really good tequila. I love the uh, the Casamigos because it is really mild and just goes down really smooth. Okay. And it pairs well with the pineapple. Which is important because from college, a lot of people have really bad memories of tequila and such. So it's nice to. Introduce the oh, you'll forget all of your bad memories with right. this good tequila. With the, with the good tequila. And and are they sponsors? Because if they're not, they should be, right? They should be. This company. There it is. They should be because we'll it's use your fabulous. tequila only. Right? Yep. Okay. So then we're gonna add our fresh mm. pineapple jalapeno and lime juice ready to go. I didn't want to give you all my secrets, so I made it in advance. You oh, stir you didn't it. tell us everything that's in there, huh? No. I know when you open those suckers, though, it was like, oh, fresh. So do you grow those or? No. You just get the fresh and slice I just, them. Yeah, I just get no the pickled. fresh. Okay. Or the local gardeners, they'll bring me theirs. Okay. So, I mean, I'm definitely going to have to have an Uber or something home. Rob, Rob's my <laughs> designated driver. I did share the, I did share the old fashioned. 
at least a couple sips. Okay, just do the rim thing and then, okay. Just take a sip, yeah. You should really open a business that serves drinks. <laughs> yeah. You're really good. Okay, we got one more? Yep, one more. Stay right there. The guru of Hipley is a man. Mm -hmm. So are many of the stars of his show. And we get to hear from him. Oh, yes, we do. And later, estimating the distance a few felines will go. The lowdown on a long jump. The dual credit and dual enrollment program is for high school students that are interested in earning John A. Logan credit. And for dual credit, oftentimes students can get high school and college credit at the same time by taking one class. And with dual enrollment, it's most often just for John A. Logan credit, um, but either way, they're earning early college credit. The dual credit program is here to help students navigate through all of their opportunities. an all women's group. It is not just for girls. Uh, no, it's girls. not. Okay. <laughs> it's definitely for guys as well. Okay. Do you have obviously more women? Are you finding that just as many guys or maybe more guys are, are jumping in today and well, wanting to be part? Well, I would say right now, guys are starting to see the guys that are in the company now to kind of okay. understand that guys can do it. Because okay. generally, I mean, if you think about it, a guy would be like, oh, you're a dancer. Mm. You do ballet, hmm. So it's kind of just like they turn their nose up at you. So we're actually setting the tone to let people know that guy dancers can still get in tune with it and still be masculine, still be a man, still be a boy, you know, still Absolutely. be a person that just learns every day. So still we're, we're to, setting the stone for that. Yeah, you get to hang out with beautiful women all day and <laughs> dance and sometimes pick them up and flip them around and whatever. That's, now, that's that, awesome. That right there, yes. So. I've been told a few times in the dance community as a piece of advice that um, you'll never know what somebody needs until you show them. Even better, you never know that you will be what someone needs until you show them. Um, when I first came to CMDC in October 2015, I was about to be 26 years old, starting to take dance classes more rigorously, specifically ballet more rigorously. And Mr. Homer in the middle of a class of full of 16, 15, 16, 17 year olds stopped the class to tell me specifically, like, I understand that you're doing other things and you're taking ballet for whatever you want to take it for, but you can actually do this specific form if you choose to. And that's never been told to me before. For whatever reason, being a shorter male, being a black male, being an older person at that point because you start ballet at least when you're four or five six right maybe 15 for men because we're more athletic so we can just kind of fit in but to hear that from somebody who didn't have to say that to me and to hear that from other people along the way it's definitely been something that i share with other people that you choose your own expiration date to whatever you do dance is dance is life and, you know, I know most people be like, hey, you know, chase your dreams. I look at it as chasing a passion that embodied me since I was little. So growing up, I didn't really, you know, I wasn't able to, like, go to classes, train, you know, do things that a lot of people are, you know, fortunate to do and have. I'm self-taught. So as I got older, only thing I've ever trained in was ballroom dancing. So me doing that made me feel good about myself to where's mm -hmm. the, like, my passion for dance not only kept me motivated because other people will look up to me or crack jokes, but I know that they liked it for real. Because uh -huh. usually people crack jokes, they still like it. That's right. That's um, right. And, you know, it kept me out of trouble. You know, it made me, it, it made me feel different. And okay. I enjoy feeling different because it makes, it makes me have that momentum to kind of have other people know, like, it's okay to be different. You don't necessarily have to fit in with everything and everybody. So just, just you know, dealing with that. And then when I made it to hip play, I was just like, this is amazing. It gives me the opportunity to give back, to give to the, the next generation or even people older than me. Yes. To give them what I didn't have and what I had. Yes. So like, for instance, uh, a few of us did a residency um, in Iowa. Okay. So we went to like 15 different schools to like perform. And just being there, seeing the kids do the things that they were doing, it was touching to me. For me to see one of our other members talking about dance and teaching the kids and they're volunteering and to see the little boys 
not caring about what their friends think of them. That's right. And this generation compared to when I grew up, yes. that was touching to me because growing up for me, it was a struggle. Your message is very positive and we thank you so much for um, letting us be part of that and getting to know you guys. And you all right, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. No, thank you. Yes, thank you. And we'll be right back. I thought I, I made that up. You really made the No, I really candy. made it. <laughs> is there anything this woman cannot do? Here's the really bad part. The loser has to do the dishes for the next month in the Spiel studio. Spiel studio, okay? Because so apparently- So basically not... nothing's gonna change. Oh. Uh, <laughs> Well, we're going to come back and do some cotton candy champagne. But before I do that, I want to let you know that a lot of our drinks, uh, we can make them into mocktails. So if you don't want to drink and get too drunk, you can come to the chandelier room, drink out of fancy glasses, drink uh, botanical elixirs or mocktails. Yes. I love so that. if you do like to drink, I highly suggest the cotton candy champagne because it's amazing. It's like two drinks in one, super fancy. You get cotton candy. Ugh. So we're gonna start off. It's not just a kid's treat anymore. With cotton candy in there. I made this last night. I thought I, I made that up. You really made the no, cotton I candy? No, I really made it. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything this woman cannot do? My son says I can do anything. You can, babe. You are really good at, oh, oh. So we're gonna oh. dilute a little bit okay. with the Tito's. And then we're gonna do some rosé champagne. So at the chandelier room, you're there seven days? A seven week? days a week. Okay. We, um, it's a venue, speakeasy, and gaming lounge. So our gaming lounge is seven days a week. We open at 9 a.m. Okay. And then on the weekends, we do live entertainment and cocktails and private events. Yeah, we, we want Mr. Ben to come and, I mean, he would have a ways to drive, but it would be worth it from Wisconsin. Definitely. To do a gig. A lot of really good talent they perform at your place. I really like to showcase uh, the best of Southern Illinois creatives. Um, whether it be, you know, your 23 year old or your 60 year old banjo player. So surprising, isn't it? Violinist. Like so much just, talent yes. in the area, so much. So then we're gonna go ahead and we top it off with a nice little cotton candy poof. Then we do an edible butterfly. Oh, I was nervous when he said the word edible, but we're good. It's just a butterfly. Just a butterfly, folks. Yes. <laughs> Dana goes, Angie, we're not talking about that kind of drink. Just zip it. This is beautiful. Wow. That, I tell you what. So much fun, right? It is a lot of fun. <laughs> do you come, I mean, do you come up with these things? People will follow you on Pinterest and all of that to learn these, these crazy, this is what it's about anymore though, is a show, right? Well, I've learned by experience. I lived in Vegas for 13 years. I did a lot of I corporate catering that. management. Yes. Um, I like to drink. Um, so yeah, I really just tinkered around with it. I really like fresh ingredients, quality mm -hmm. ingredients where you're not getting a lot of extra additives or preservatives. So that's why I try to make things and or just get you the best vodka or best tequila. I love that. And the vodka, Tito's, they don't sponsor you yet either? They should, because I really do Tito's. a lot of things with Tito's. I marinate my Tito's with vegetables for my Bloody Mary, and I make the best Bloody Mary. Everybody comes and says, this is the best I've ever had. At the chandelier room. And then we do a lot of other marinated vodkas as well to make yes. martinis. Yes, so does this thing fly off and then I get to eat that, or what, what's gonna happen here? So you can do one of two things. You can either push down the cotton candy and it'll mm. dissolve, or if you take a drink, it just starts dissolving anyways. But I think it would like run all over me, right? If I... It doesn't, but just push it in if you want. Push it, mm -hmm. okay, push it. Okay, I gotta have some of this cotton candy though, girl. I'm glad you brought extra, because that is amazing. I brought some extra glasses. Yeah. Rob, how long has it been since you've had cotton candy? 
Um, probably a couple of years. We'll come up. May we? May yeah. we have a tiny bit? Rob, I'd like to share some cotton candy with you. Because, see, Rob doesn't drink. And I love that about Rob. Because if I'm drinking during this show, Rob will drive me home. It'll be great. That's awesome. It's a great duo. Is this edible? Yeah, but it's not that flavorful. <laughs> it's fabulous. It'll, I mean, the pe listen, when you're on television, it's great. You know what it reminds me of totally? It's the communion stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you put it in a totally. Oh, yeah. This is so it is. Good. Rob, we were going to do it together. You didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> we were going to do Oh, God. Dana's like, Angie, get out of my jar. Okay. You know, you're fine. Here. I, I did wash my hands. All right, let's. Cheers. Cheers. Watch how fast. Uh, I'm savoring mine. Mm -hmm. It I ate mine really quickly. I would quickly. show you what happened. Like, there's nothing there. Just dissolved. Poof. Listen, mm. so you can't do, do you do bottomless these on Sunday? We do bottomless mimosas. Just mimosas. Well, it's actually table side it's mimosas. Too fancy. You get a bottle of champagne, a juice carafe, you get your flutes, and you go ahead and make your own. And mm -hmm. then we do bottomless Bloody Marys on Sunday. With the marinated vegetables? Yes. It's like healthy, healthy vodka. I tell you what, if they don't sponsor you, they're goofy. The Chandelier Room. Why would you not want your name aligned with that? Brought to you by Tito's, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I feel badly, so you take, well, something. Well, cheers or I'll drink is it. that customary? Okay. Woo! Cheers. Right there, babe. All right. Hey. Mm. We hope you're enjoying the show <laughs> thus far. I mean, we're. I, I've, I don't think I've ever had three cocktails in a row on the show, so that's big. Yay. Shane, good luck. Editing this one. <laughs> we'll be right back. Anyway, I did find something that is noteworthy this week. Okay. Okay. Again, I don't know what's up with the cats, but it, it's the cats. It okay? always is. It I'm a patient of Dr. Hughes for the last eight years. Uh, he's really a good dentist. He's one of the best. I had a lot of work done, had implants put in, a lot of teeth pulled out. I was really in bad shape. He might have saved my life because if you don't get your dental together, you can have heart attacks, you can have a lot of problems. The man really took care of me and his staff. They are professional people. Every time I come in here, it was just like a friend or family member coming in. I felt relaxed. And we've promised you that you would laugh watching this show, and I think you've probably done it several times. Um, looking over the feeds this week, I did discover not necessarily funny things as much as people dancing. Like that whole popping and locking thing and stepping, it's it's amazing to me. That's old. That's I know so it's old, old but it, they brought it back <laughs> and it's, it's really working and um, I want you to take a look at this. We've got Alda Puff Daddies, which is a group of dads. Okay. And they want to show that, you know, you never get too old to, to move that thing, to shake that thing. So they look great, right? And then you've got this Kevin Concrete Davis. This guy looks like cotton candy. This guy is amazing. I think he's actually been picked up to do some commercial work for certain brands. So we'll try to run that down for you. And, okay. So anyway, I did find something that is noteworthy this week. Okay. Okay. Again, I don't know what's up with the cats, but it, it's the cats. It okay? always is. It, it's the cats. The well, cats. Well, I mean, if you look at uh, like Egypt and like their ancient stuff, they, they're all about cats. Right. So they're mythical. Yeah. Right. Okay. So apparently, Mia and Jerry have their own Instagram. Okay. okay. And those are and, cats. And, and, yeah. And I want to say they have like a quarter million followers or whatever. It's insane. I mean, oh, wow. they're, they're cats, right? And so their parents have them perform various things their on parents. their channels, right? The, the cat's parents. I've always and, thought that was weird. And, and they're called like Meow Mia. Meow Mia. Okay. So here's what we're going to do. Um, we're going to have a contest and, and actually okay. a, a, little, a little side I'm going to win. If you will. Okay. okay. Well, I know you're, you're going to win. And here's the really bad part. The loser has to do the dishes for the next month in the Spiel Studio. Spiel Studio, okay? So, apparently so basically not, nothing's going to change. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. Well, you got, we got to sweeten the deal a little. So I want you to tell me how many rows of cups you think Jerry will be able to, to master. And this is Jerry. This is Jerry. Okay, right? that's, that's, Jerry. that's a we very important distinction. Well, we haven't seen him in action. I haven't seen his well, form. Well, you, you can't. You're, you're not going to be able to. I just want you to know. I'm going to say 22 rows. 
22 rows. You think Jerry's going to be able to jump 22 rows? Yeah. This is only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This mm -hmm. is seven. Yeah. Are he's we a, building? He's a cat. Yeah. Okay. So you guys ready? You yeah. didn't say how many rows. Oh, uh, sorry, 15. 15 rows. Sure. 22 rows. Here we 22 go. 22 rows. Watch your okay. be like one. Is it going to be like seven? So there's Jerry. I'm already out. Jerry. Where's Mia? Look at Mia. Mia's in the background. She comes in and out. There's Mia. Mia's coming in. Look at Jerry. Jerry's getting a running start. Jerry is tearing it Jerry. up. Jerry! <laughs> new, a new, a new strategy. Brilliant. A new right. strategy. That has is been so good. You want to know how many rows? How many rows? Twenty rows. What's up? Good job. I didn't go over. Wait, All no, right. I didn't go over. You did go over. So, what do you over. think? Good show. Yeah, he's got to do the dishes. I thought now. it was a fantastic show. I'm. You not, have to do the dishes now. Yeah, I'm gonna just not eat here right, ever again. Right, because you're the only one. <laughs> no, not everybody your own else dishes. Does. You have to do everybody else's. I'm dishes. gonna paper plates from paper now on, plates everybody. From now on, the, at least for a month. You know, for a month, and All then right. I'll unhide the glass plate. So what do you guys think? We've got like a state snake. Yeah. Huh? That was good. Think, we learned that. St like the state has its own snake. Yeah. Right. Did, it's crazy. No right. And remarkable talent all over this country and we just find them. Yeah. Oh, they're just... They're just coming out of the woodward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we just pick them up and we show them to everybody yeah. before they get big. Yeah. And anytime we talk about food, people come running. I do. All right. Okay. We'll find us where? Uh, Spielon.com. That's and, it. Or Spielon.com. Words. Spielon.com slash YouTube. Or you can uh, come to Carbondale and appear on the show. Carbondale, Illinois. Yeah. You can all find right. us here. Right. Fly on in. Or walk on in. Whatever. Okay. Would well, you like to say goodbye? Uh, yeah. Yeah, this Goodbye. boy. <laughs> this boy. <laughs>
Okay, so we'd like to welcome you into the spiel. Satisfactory? That okay, great, hurts. I got the thumbs up. So what are we setting up? Listen, this is an interview segment. This guy, I had to, to really chase him. He's like a state superstar in Illinois. Hi, I'm Ginger Heifel. I designated the state snake of Illinois and I'm on the spiel. 